How's it going, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson, BamaInsider.com. I hope you enjoyed today's coverage on BamaInsider.com regarding Alabama's first practice of the 2019 season. You can catch all the coverage back on BamaInsider.com. If you want to become a premium subscriber, all you got to do is go to the website and at checkout, the promo code for free 30 days is simply Roll Tide. I also have a special right now. It's $75 to the Adidas store when you sign up for a premium subscription, and you also get $25 off your premium account. So be sure and get all those details at BamaInsider.com. Today, I wanted to provide some observations after Alabama's first football practice of fall camp. And you can check out the highlights right here on our YouTube channel. I'm sure you guys got to run through them. But I wanted to provide um, a couple observations because I know going into the first practice, there was a lot of questions. There was a lot of concerns regarding the defensive side of the ball. And I think that's probably where I'll start out today with my observations. And I want to talk about the outside linebackers first off. And of course, there was no Yabi Anoma. He's no longer listed on Alabama's roster after entering the NCAA transfer portal. He's back in Washington, D.C. He's removed from the roster. He was not at practice. So I know there was, you know, there might be a little bit of confusion regarding Yabi, but Yabi is not on the team. And we'll, of course, get a, an official official statement from Nick Saban on Saturday, August 3rd. And I think when you look at the uh, the outside linebackers, you got to really be intrigued with what's going to happen with Terrell Lewis and what is the status of Terrell Lewis health-wise because he had a ACL injury last year. You also have Chris Allen who had an ACL. So those are two pivotal players that will play important roles this year. So getting an early glimpse of them during August 2nd, I saw a lot of positives from Terrell Lewis from an agility standpoint. And why is that important? Well, because agility plays a a big role in his recovery, right? I mean, it was an ACL. It's a a major injury, and it held him out of spring practice, held him out of last season. And I saw him moving very well today, and I think that's exciting news for Crimson Tide football fans. So rest assured, it looks like he is on the path to recovery. Is he close to 100%? I mean, possibly. He looked pretty good. Now, remember today, they're only in shirts and shorts, so they're not in full pads, and we won't get the pads popping until a couple days. But from what we saw early on, Terrell Lewis looks like he is doing very well. Chris Allen, I'm not quite sure. You know, it seemed like he's not quite to where Terrell Lewis is health-wise. It seems like he's sometimes moving a little slow in and out of cut. So let's continue to track the progress of Chris Allen as we go forward. A couple other guys who I thought looked good, and Anthony Jennings is just, you know, what a player. I mean, he's certainly probably one of the alpha males on defense. He's now a senior, and he had a big year last year. Nobody really talks about him. I know he was mentioned in a couple preseason award watches, but he's a guy on the defense that's going to do a lot just from a leadership perspective. He's a grown man, 265 pounds. I mean, he's a big man. Moves very well. Sal Sinceri always giving him positive praise in and out of his reps with the defense. And then two younger guys who I felt did a really good job today. And it was really our first time getting to see them. Um, we saw Kevin Harris a little bit during the springtime, being he was early and rolly. He looks great. I mean, um, Kevin Harris is, uh, I'm trying to look for his height and weight on my board in my office. And he's, he's a big kid, you know, uh, six foot five, 230 some pounds, and he moves well. And it was my first time to actually get to see King Makuda. And King Makuda looks very good. I, I, I think he's a guy who could really do big things this year for the the Crimson Tide. Maybe not in terms of starting, but I think in terms of getting development. And you want to have guys like Kevin Harris and King Makuda in your younger depth, getting reps from the getting reps following those older guys to get experience. I don't think those guys will see much playing time, but I think from a developmental perspective, I think those guys are gonna do great things and, and great get great leadership from Anthony Jennings and Terrell Lewis. Um, South Sinceria, of course, bringing the heat with the outside linebackers. It's always entertaining to watch. Also got a chance to see the inside linebackers. I know there was a lot of people, and, and me as well, that was excited to see the inside linebackers. And repping with the first teams, you had um, Dylan Moses and Joshua McMillan. And I think those guys are going to be the leaders of that inside linebacking core, along with Markel Benton and surprisingly Shane Lee is a freshman. We saw him 
working with the uh, ones today. And then behind the ones, it was Dylan Moses, Ali Kaho, and, um, you know, uh, Christian Harris, who was, who was a new addition as well. So the younger guys, there's a lot of depth overall at the inside linebacker. And, and we know that Dylan Moses is going to be the Mike. He's going to be the guy who calls the defense for Pete Golding out there. But the wheel, we're not quite sure who it's going to be, either Joshua McMillan or Markel Benton. I think those are the two guys who are starting to rise up. And I will say, though, Dylan Moses and Ali Kahu, they those guys are very capable. And then, like I said, Shane Lee was uh, with the first team. So there's a lot of depth, a lot of talent within the inside linebacker position. And it's quite interesting to watch Pete Golding coach his inside linebackers because the wealth and knowledge that Pete Golding demonstrates is is really mind-blowing. I mean, he's a future head football coach, absolutely. And I know that's probably bad news for Alabama Crimson Tide fans. But I think eventually Pete Golding is going to get his shot. So, um, you know, and and that's going to come. And that's just something that you have to deal with. But when he works with his inside linebackers, it's, it's really great to see because those guys are getting so much knowledge from one of the best in the business. I also got an opportunity to see the secondary and, and not the corners today, but I did get an opportunity to see the safeties. Xavier McKinney looks like an All-American, as you would imagine. Um, Jared Maiden right behind him, not too far off talent-wise. And you have Daniel Wright, who I think is eager to – make a splash and, and show what he's capable of this year. And then some of the younger guys who stood out, um, Jordan Battles, my for, first time really getting a chance to see him. And then also DeMarco Hellams, who's another guy who, who certainly stood out today in terms of the younger guys. So it's a lot of talent within that uh, secondary safety position. But Xavier McKinney is really out front talent-wise. I just think that, you know, he's – demonstrated over the last couple couple of seasons that he's someone who's going to be Alabama's next big time player in the secondary and and I think we saw a lot of that when he was the defensive MVP of the Orange Bowl um got a chance to watch the quarterbacks and the tight ends I didn't see too much of the wide receivers didn't see the running backs I didn't see the offensive line um, I will get to those positions as we move forward. There's a lot to cover, but these are just some early observations from what I saw today at practice. And you can catch the full scoop on BamaInsider.com. From the quarterback standpoint, you can look at Tua, who is throwing right next to Talia, his younger brother. And um, there's a big description in arm strength. You have Tua, who you know has an absolute cannon. So you have him followed by. Talia, and then you have Mac Jones and Paul Tyson. While those guys don't have the arm strength, they can certainly uh, still zip the football downfield. It's just Tua's at a whole different level. I don't think there's too many quarterbacks in college football that can rival Tua Tungo Valoa, but I saw them working with the tight ends today. And the tight end is an interesting position because you don't have Kedrick James anymore. He transferred to SMU. Miller Forrestal is um, out with an undisclosed injury. We'll find out more on that and report back on BamaInsider.com. So leading the tight ends, it was actually Major Tennyson. Um, Major Tennyson, he's a, he's a big kid, you know, six foot five, 250 pounds. He's a redshirt freshman. Probably not the most, uh, not not a tight end that's going to provide a lot of play playmaking ability, but I think he's a guy who's a possession or could be a lineman. Um, for, you know, when Alabama needs to run to, you know, the right or the left side of the football, depending on where he lines up. Um, Cameron Latou switched to number 81 from number 24, and he looks great. You know, it's not an experiment anymore. Cameron Latou is a tight end for the Alabama Crimson Tide, and I've never seen him drop a football, to be honest. I mean, I think he's just extremely talented, and to be able to play at both outside linebacker and Tight end says a lot about his overall athleticism behind him. It was Giles Amos, who's a senior tight end. Um, you also have uh, Jahil Billingsley. That was my first time to see Jahil Billingsley. He's a summer enrollee. And I think when you look at a player who can make plays at the tight end position going forward, it could be him. You know, he's he's got a lot of athleticism. He's got some great size to him. So I, I know there was people on our channel and on our website that were really excited to see what Jahil Billingsley could offer. And I think people are going to be really excited with what he brings to this roster. Got a small chance to see some of the wide receivers. Got to see Henry Ruggs. Just comes out of his routes like an NFL player, turns it up fields, working with a new wide receiver coach, Holman Wiggins. And then also got a chance to see Slade Bolden. 
um, who looks really great. I mean, making big strides year over year. And then, of course, John Mechie working right behind them. Um, I mean, just goes up and gets the football, turns it upfield. I mean, what an incredible um, set of receivers Alabama has, right? I mean, these are the, the best receivers in college football. And to see them practice every day, I mean, these guys are putting in absolute work. And it's no wonder why these guys are top tier when you think about elite talent for the wide receiver position. So, yeah, I, I just wanted to provide some early observation observations and like i said we will get a chance to hear from steve sarkeesian pete golding as well as nick saban and several alabama crimson tide football players on saturday august 3rd as it's media day and it's actually fan day so you're gonna get um if you're a fan in the tuscaloosa area and you're making it your way down to bryant denny you're gonna be able to get autographs so be sure and head to bryant denny it's free get to watch the team practice it's really the only time of the season you have that opportunity so if you want to really get out there and see the crimson tide um do that that's friday that's saturday august 3rd at brian denny stadium i I guess um on ending i I wanted to touch on the quarterbacks one more time and in terms of depth at the quarterback position you know you have Tua, and he's such an exceptional quarterback but behind him i'm just you know there's younger guys And, and while mac jones has made a big progression And a lot of improvement year over year. You know, there's just a big talent gap between Tua and the guys next in line. I mean, I think last year people were probably a little bit spoiled who were were Crimson Tide fans because you could swap out Tua and then insert Jalen, who had a lot of playing experience. Now, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with Talia and Mac Jones. And is that a position battle that is taking place? Or is Mac Jones wrapped up that number two position? Sometimes I've seen... Regarding Mac Jones, he kind of throws the football a little bit with a little with a lackadaisical approach. I'm not knocking him. It's just that's how it seems. Maybe I'm seeing it wrong. Um, Check the highlights and let me know what you think. Um, Paul Tyson, I think, is behind both of those guys. Um, So I think it's, you know, a a race for the number two position between Mac Jones and um, Talia. But I, but I do think that Mac Jones has showed a lot of improvement year over year. Let me know what you think. Sign off in the comment box. I, I certainly appreciate all the feedback. And thanks for being a subscriber to BamaInsider.com, especially to our YouTube channel. And we would love the opportunity to earn your business on BamaInsider.com. If you're curious about becoming a premium subscriber, the promo code at checkout is simply Roll Tide. You can catch me on uh, the YouTube channel. I will be back with my call-in show on Sundays, and we'll have those, um, you know, in, in a couple more weeks. And I'd love to take your calls and um, hear what you want to talk about regarding the Alabama Crimson Tide football team. And we're just days away from their matchup with Duke. It's uh, it's the month of football, and I hope that you've been enjoying our coverage. Stay tuned for a, a ton of content on our YouTube channel and, of course, on BamaInsider.com. Reporting from Tuscaloosa, Alabama, this is Kyle Henderson. Talk soon.